All right. Is there a phone call? Hi, um, Ms. Ackman, I'm enjoying the show very much with your guest, Dr. Lee. Earlier in the show, you said Dr. Lee had mentioned that there is an increase of lung in lung cancer among women. I'd like um, to know what is that attributed to, and why is there an increase among uh, in, in lung cancer women. in women? Uh, right. Uh, there's no doubt that there's an increase. It's now uh, becoming the number one cancer in, in women. And uh, the uh, increase is attributed to the cigarette smoking increase that's occurred over the last 20, 20 years um, among right. women. Yeah. The Virginia Slims ads have, have worked. <laughs> and uh, uh, there may be other factors involved, but that has to be the major factor, don't you think? I think so, yeah. yes. So it's the increase in smoking among women. Uh, I'm afraid so. And it's hard to undo 20, 30 years of smoking, uh, even if you quit now. So uh, it's a word to the wise that are younger and haven't started yet, I hope. Yeah. One of my co-workers recently was diagnosed with lung cancer, and she's receiving chemo, um, I think, twice weekly. Um, and she said that the so. chemo has had a good effect in that the... Uh, the cancer is starting, and I don't know if this is the proper language, shrink, if that's the appropriate mm -hmm. word. Right. Unfortunately, there's a difference between having the cancer appear to shrink on x-ray and having good results in the long run. Her Herb Cain uh, was a very uh, famous uh, columnist in the San Francisco Chronicle. And I remember a year ago, he was saying he was having good results with chemo, and he died last week. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a doctor at uh, St. Vincent's Hospital in New York uh, who uh, tells a story about... Uh, uh, one of his colleagues coming out of a room where he had a patient, and he said his patient just died. He said, but he had no cancer. <laughs> you know, but the patient's <laughs> the dead. The treatment was a and success, but the patient he died. Wrote, he wrote this letter to the Canadian Medical Journal up there. I can't remember the name of it. And what he said, I think we ought to rethink cancer. In other words, it's not the tumor that we ought to worry about. There are other things we have to be concerned about. You know, one of our board members, I think this is an interesting thing related to this uh, idea that the chemotherapy shrunk the tumor. One of our board members was diagnosed, uh, actually she was one of the founders of the organization, with a colon uh, cancer. And it was obvious, so it was down near the anal area and it was very obvious. She died 23 years after the diagnosis. Mm -hmm never had the cancer removed. It was always there. Sure. She didn't even get rid of it, but it didn't cause her death. Now, what's better, you know, uh, being relieved of the tumor and dying or keeping the tumor and doing things that can save your life or setting up what we call host resistance? Sure. Makes more sense to me. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I think that uh, people are getting away from the 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 idea that there is a magic uh, a cure in radiation yeah. or the knife uh, yeah. for these. And we have I, to get to a deeper level. We're at the same level in understanding cancer as we were 100 years ago 100 with tuberculosis. Years ago, yeah. yes. In other words, the focus is that if one cell becomes a barren, what's going to happen is that one cell is going to produce a tumor that's going to be deadly, as though it has absolutely no connection with body function. Mm -hmm. Now, that the whole concept, they're still treating based on that concept, but I think that concept needs to be changed since they discovered that there was a connection between the immune system and cancer. Now we have to understand it's really a systemic problem, mm -hmm. not just a systemic disease, right. a systemic problem. You have to correct systemically. And I think this idea of balancing hormones is a very important part of the whole scene. Well, that's why I like to come to those annual symposia that you put on. The other speakers are so good <laughs> that you get. Yeah, it's a good place to have an yeah. exchange of ideas, isn't I've enjoyed it? it every time yes. I've had the chance to come. Yeah. This last convention, I think we're deviating a little bit from uh, the uh, main topic today, but we had a young man come in from Israel 
who uh, developed a uh, an herbal preparation which was uh, designed to take care of common colds. And someone at the University of Kansas, I think it was, a research center down there, decided that they were going to use it in uh, uh, some research uh, with cancer cells first in the Petri dish, you see. Mm -hmm. And it had some sort of uh, response. And they went beyond that and went on to... Uh, uh, with animals and so on and now they're trying and that group is not trying it out with humans but the uh, person in Israel actually he was a businessman selling other things too when he created this just for his own business but there is a research center out in California that's now trying it out with people we'll see what happens well I have a feeling that somewhere in nature there's an answer to almost every health problem that we have and that we've probably just barely um, scratched the surface. I think so, too. And it would be a great danger if we lose great segments yeah. of natural life. I was life. in a discussion of not too long ago, probably six months ago, uh, with uh, two oncologists, one from Columbia Presbyterian, which is one of our prestigious institutions, and one from Sloan Kettering. And, of course, I differed with their point of view. Uh, but and expressed our different uh, concept of how cancer ought to be treated. And what was interesting is both of them had a comment to make about it, and they said it may turn out to be a change in lifestyle. I think of that. <laughs> yes. Well, because they're dealing with the yeah. problem all the time, sure. you see. And it must be frustrating for doctors to uh, fail at some point. <laughs> Let me say that I agree with you, but, and it carries on in all fields of medicine.